Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alex, logo designer and icon maker. This right here is my workspace. And that's my MacBook Pro. I usually work right here, especially during the warm months, when the hot Spanish sun warms every inch of the land. But winter's here now, and working here isn't so cozy. Time to switch things up for the winter mode. Now working will be much cozier. And when it gets warmer, I'll move my table back closer to the window. These changes in my workspace inspire me to modification the font for my nickname, Blagut. Typography and creating fonts are some of my favorite things to do. By the way, I've already got a video on my channel about creating own font in Adobe Illustrator using FontSelf Maker. You can check it out in the link in the description box. To fine tune the typography for my nickname, I'll make a mood board. Great, time to sketch out. I've got just five letters to work on, and I want to do it excellent.
I think the sketch is ready. Let's move it over to Adobe Illustrator. I'll be using a modular grid for the lettering. As a result, I got this inscription Blagut. Now I want to create seamless pattern using these letters. In Adobe Photoshop, I've prepared a few cover designs for social media. Now it's time to update the look across all my social profiles. It's a bit routine, but I'm really pleased with how it turns out. By the way, if you need a set of icons or a logo, you can order them from me. I'm always open to new projects. And you can find the Google form for order in the description box. Also, it's possible that I already have icons in my collection that could suit your project. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Hey there! Welcome back to my channel. I am Alex, logo designer and icon maker in Adobe Illustrator. I really love my MacBook Pro. In fact, I've been a loyal macOS user for over 10 years now. Here's how my first MacBook Unibody looked back in 2009. It was an incredible and revolutionary computer. Throughout these years, I've observed the evolution of the interface especially the evolution of icons. And with the arrival of macOS Big Sur, the style and design of icons have completely changed. I really like the new design of icons in the macOS interface. By the way, some time ago, I created an icon for the ChatGPT desktop app. I have a video about it, and you can watch it through the link in the description box. Recently, I decided to create my own collection of wireless system icons in the macOS style. Before starting to draw icons, I need to create a new project in Milanote. First, I'll decide on the list of icons. Now it's time to search for reference images to prepare for this project and to get inspired.
great. Mood board is ready. Let's move on to the sketch. In this set, I'll make 20 icons. Sketch is ready. Now I'll transfer it to Adobe Illustrator. By the way, if you need a set of icons or a logo, you can order them from me. I'm always open to new projects. And you can find the Google form for order in the description box. Also, it's possible that I already have icons in my collection that could suit your project. When I create icons, I use a special file with a modular grid for each icon. In this set of icons, I use two different line thicknesses. After several hours of work, I've got this set of icons. You can buy this set of icons and many others on my Gumroad page. This set of icons is perfect not only for the macOS interface, but also for your project. For a more detailed look at this project, you can check it out on my Behance page through the link in the description box.
I hope you enjoyed this video and this set of icons. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Hey there! Welcome back to my channel. I am Alex, logo designer and icon maker in Adobe Illustrator. Recently, I made a tutorial video for my YouTube channel on using the gradient spine effect to create amazing and abstract gradient backgrounds that inspired me to start my own poster collection with unique gradient backgrounds. I took on this challenge and decided to create 20 posters. Before diving in, I thought of making a quick mood board to get inspired and gather enough color gradient combinations. The next step was sketching. I needed to plan out the direction and number of curves for each poster in advance.
sketch done. Now I'll use it as a base to create posters in Adobe Illustrator. The blend effect allows for incredible color transitions, which really drives my creativity. After several hours of work, I ended up with this collection of posters. Once the posters were done, I needed to put together a case for Behance. For this, I use Figma and Photoshop. In Adobe Photoshop, I edit mockups, inserting my posters. I got so into the process that I decided to print out a few posters and frame them. You can purchase this set of posters and much more on my Camrod page. These posters will look fantastic in your space and ignite your creative ideas. By the way, you can download three posters for free for personal use as a trial version. For a more detailed look at this poster collection, you can check it out on my Behance page through the link in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon! Hey there! Welcome back to my channel! I'm Alex, logo designer and icon maker in Adobe Illustrator.
I am constantly expanding my icon portfolio, adding more new themes and sets to it. Recently, Meta released the new Quest 3 Mixed Reality headset. So, I decided to create a new set of icons, centered around the Metaverse theme. By the way, you can find my icon sets on sites like Adobe Stack, Shutterstock, iStack, Creative Market and many others. Before diving into drawing the icons, I start by outlining them. I use the Mind Node app to brainstorm and map out words associated with the Metaverse theme. Now I'll create a new project in Milanode for Moodboard. Great! Moodboard is done. Moving on to the sketch. This set will include 20 icons.
Sketch completed. And now I'll transfer it to Adobe Illustrator. When I create icons in Adobe Illustrator, I use a special file with a modular grid for each one icon. This helps me make pixel-perfect icons with editable stroke. After a few hours of work, here's the icon set I've come up with. You can purchase this icon set and many others on my Camroad page. This is a universal set and can be used for your projects, whether it's for iOS or Android apps, websites, presentations or graphic design. For a more detailed look at this project, you can check it out on my Behance page through the link in the description box. By the way, if you need a set of icons or a logo, you can order them from me. I'm always open to new projects, and you can find the Google form for order in the description box. Also, it's possible that I already have icons in my collection that could suit your project. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Hey there! Welcome back to my channel. I am Alex, a logo designer and icon maker in Adobe Illustrator. I recently decided to count how many icons I have made over the past 10 years. I even uploaded a short video about it. In the end, I came up with around 5570 icons. I think that's a great achievement, but I'm not stopping there. 
I have decided to create a new set of icons focused on different dog breeds. By the way, you can find my icon sets on various websites like Adobe Stock, Shutterstock, iStock, Creative Market and many others. Before I start drawing icons for dog breeds, I need to set up a new project in Milanote. Perfect, I've chosen the dog breeds I'm going to draw in my set. Let's move on to sketching. In this set I'll be making 20 icons. The sketch is ready, and now I'll transfer it to Adobe Illustrator.
when I create icons in Adobe Illustrator, I use a special file with a modular grid for each one icon. This helps me make pixel-perfect icons with editable stroke. After a few hours of work, here's the icon set I've come up with. You can purchase this icon set and many others on my Camrod page. This is universal set and can be used for your projects, whether it's for iOS or Android apps, websites, presentations or graphic design. For a more detailed look at this project, you can check it out on my Behance page through the link in the description box. By the way, if you need a set of icons or a logo, you can order them from me. I'm always open to new projects and you can find the Google form for order in the description box. Also, it's possible that I already have icons in my collection that could suit your project. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex, I am full-time logo designer and icon maker. I often come up with logos by combining different associations. This way I build my portfolio of logos that I later sell on the LogoGround website. I usually create logos using Adobe Illustrator. I've been using it for over 10 years. But recently I asked myself a question. Can I make a logo on my iPhone? Is it really? I think let's find out together. Recently, I had an idea for a logo for an educational institution. I thought about combining two associations. The first association is the human brain, symbolizing knowledge and thinking. The second association is a tree, symbolizing wisdom and longevity. I usually start working on a logo with a mood board.
it's time to sketch out the future logo. Don't forget to click subscribe if you want more weekly updates on design. create a logo on the iPhone, you need to buy and unpack it. This is my new iPhone 15 blue color. For drying the logo, I use the Curve app. It's a simple and user-friendly vector editor. Even if you don't have experience, you will quickly be able to understand this app. First, you need to set up a template for more convenient work. Now I'll create a modular grid. This will help maintain the right proportions. The main work on the logo is done. I can save this logo in SVG format for fuller editing and working with it. I decided to enhance the logo a bit and add a dimension using gradient and shadows. In the end, I ended up with this unique logo. 
As you can see, making a logo on the iPhone is more than possible. If you don't have access to a laptop or Adobe Illustrator, you can use your smartphone for quick sketching of your ideas. I think this is an excellent result. For a more detailed look at this case, you can check it out on Behance through the link in the description box. It's a unique logo, and only one person can buy it for their brand or business, but only once. You can purchase it exclusively on my Gumroad page. By the way, if you need a logo or a set of icons, you can order them from me. I am always open to new projects. You'll find the order form link in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon! Hi there, I am Alex, logo designer and icon maker for various projects. But you know what, I also have a passion for crafting new fonts. In my portfolio you will find over a dozen unique typefaces. Fonts are like the secret for successful design. They can convey emotions, feelings and a touch of elegance to any design. Today I want to add another font to my collection. I think it will be simple, elongated and thin font sans serif. I start working on the font with a mood board. Creating a mood board allows me to get inspired and train observation. Next up, it's time to sketch out the font.
I have to consider different letter forms and ligatures to make the font more harmonious. Sketching takes quite a bit of time. Usually I spend several days on it. Once the sketch is ready, I photograph all the images and transfer them to Adobe Illustrator. Crafting a font, even a simple one, takes a lot of time. I carefully draw each letter. In the end, I've got more than 500 glyphs, because I create a multilingual font with Latin and Cyrillic characters. To turn vector objects into a font, I use the FontSelf Maker plugin for Adobe Illustrator. It's a fantastic tool that lets you create fonts of all kinds, even colorful ones. If you're eager to make your own font, you can grab the FontSelf Maker plugin at a 10% discount using the link in the description box. It's a great tool! With the font creation is complete, it's time to package it for release. I've added this font for sale on my Gumroad page. You can purchase and use it in your own projects. By doing so, you'll be supporting me in this creative journey. For a more detailed look at this font, you can check it out on Big Hands through the link in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Hey there, I'm Alex, and I've been doing icon design in Adobe Illustrator for over 10 years. This is my first set of icons in thin lines that I published over 9 years ago. Not bad for a first try, right? It even got 4 thumbs up on Behance. I'm uploading my icons to various selling platforms like Adobe Stock, Shutterstock, iStock, creative market, and many more. Currently, my collection boasts several thousand icons covering various themes. What started as a small hobby has turned into a steady source of income. In this video, I'll be creating icons centered around water treatment. To start, I'll create a mood board.
Great, I think I've settled on the icons. I'll be drawing for this set. Let's move on to sketching. Typically, my icon sets contain anywhere from 16 to 20 icons. For this set, I'll be making 20 icons. This sketch is ready. Now let's transfer it to Adobe Illustrator. Usually, when I create icons, I use a pre-made file with a modular grid for each icon. This approach allows me to make icons consistent, proportional and in a unified style. I create pixel-perfect icons that have editable stroke. Designing icons is like meditation for me. After a few hours of work, I've got this set of icons. You can purchase this icon set and many others on my Gumroad page. This icon set is perfect for your project if it's related to water treatment. Regardless of what you're creating, these icons are suitable for iOS or Android apps, websites, presentations or graphic design. The excellent combination of lines and proportions create a stunning and modern design.
for a more detailed look at this case, you can check it out on Behance through the link in the description box. By the way, if you need a custom set of icons or a logo, you can order them for me. I am always open to new projects. You'll find the contact form in the description box. Feel free to reach out, I must already have icons that fit your project. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon! Welcome to the exciting world of creative and unique logo design. A logo is the calling card of any brand, its face and voice. A logo can imprint itself in memory within mere seconds, making the brand recognizable, like a visual identity that conceals a multitude of ideas and messages. And for me, the most crucial tool in logo design is the use of the golden ratio. I always strive to adhere to this principle, this philosophy. I aim to embed images and meanings into my logos that aren't superficial but sadly I look to them. And for maintaining the right forms and proportions, I utilize a modular grid and the golden ratio. Today, I'll tell you about one of such logos where I applied the golden ratio. Some time ago, I created a logo for a company called Joydis, specializing in manufacturing technical equipment of rehabilitation for children. It's a new brand, and their main goal is to produce high-quality products that match competitors but are sold at an affordable price. I gladly took on this project. The core idea of the logo is to depict care, reliability, movement and joy. Based on these associations, I started creating a mood board. Before diving into further work on the logo, let me explain in more detail what the golden ratio is. The golden ratio is a mathematical relationship often found in the world around us, such as in architecture, painting and modern design. Using the golden ratio allows you to create an image that is naturally aesthetically pleasing and attractive to the eye. The golden ratio is derived from the Fibonacci sequence, a sequence of numbers named after the Italian mathematician Fibonacci. The essence of the Fibonacci sequence lies in placing the numbers 0 and 1 in a row, and then adding them. This results in the digit 1. We then place this number further in the sequence alongside our initial numbers 0 and 1. Next, we sum up the neighboring numbers 1 plus 1. As a result, we get the digit 2. We place the digit 2 in the sequence with the other numbers. Now, sum up 1 and 2, resulting in the digit 3. We also place in the digit 3 in the sequence with the other numbers. Then we sum up 2 and 3, resulting in the digit 5 and we place it in the sequence with the other numbers as well. If we continue to sum up the two neighboring numbers, we'll end up with an infinite sequence like this. 
This sequence of numbers is called the Fibonacci numbers. In these numbers, there's an interesting property. If you divide any number starting from 5 by the previous number, you'll get approximately 1 and 6 tenths. After the 13th number, this division will consistently yield around 1 for 618 thousandths. This number is called the golden number. It forms the proportion known as the golden ratio. For visualization, Fibonacci numbers can be represented as squares with sides of 1 and 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on. Placing these squares so that each successive one touches the previous ones results in the golden ratio diagram. And if I draw a spiral to represent the interaction between these squares, it becomes the golden spiral. The golden spiral is considered a natural phenomenon and is often found in the world around us and in nature, like seashells, snail shells, various plants, and natural phenomena. The golden ratio is applied in design to achieve aesthetics. This ratio creates a sense of natural beauty, harmony, and proportion. Golden ratio commonly used in typesetting text arrays. For example, if the main text is 15 pixels in size, multiplying it by 1 and 6 tenths yields 24 pixels. This implies that the natural balance between the main text and the headline would be achieved if the headline is a 24 pixels tall. Logos of popular brands like Twitter, Pepsi and Apple are greatly influenced by golden ratio. Apple's affinity for the golden ratio is well known among their fans and in the design world. Even the iCloud logo incorporates the golden ratio. I frequently use the golden ratio in logo development. It can involve using circles with diameters in a specific sequence or constructing the logo within the overall proportion of the golden ratio. Now that you understand the golden ratio and Fibonacci numbers, I can continue and start sketching the Joydis logo. During the mood board creation, I realized that the key associations for the logo would revolve around the brand's initials J and D. Also, the heart and arrow imagery symbolizing care, joy, reliability and movement. The logo should be simple, with a clear and memorable image. Great sketches. Time for a coffee break. While working on this logo, I will use a modular grid and the proportion of the golden ratio. This will help me create an aesthetically pleasing logo. I calculated all the circle diameters using the golden number. 
the logo resembles the shape of a heart and an arrow. I use shades of blue as the primary colors. It's an excellent logo. I am pleased with the outcome, and the golden ratio helped maintain pleasing proportions that are easy on the eyes. By the way, if you need a logo or a set of icons, you can totally order them from me. I am always open to new projects. You'll find the contact form in the description box. For a more detailed look at this case, you can check it out on Behance through the link in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon. This is my workspace. I spend several hours here every day. It's where my logos and icon sets come to life. So, when I have some free time from logo design orders, which doesn't happen very often, I don't just sit back and relax. No, I keep on working and creating new logos to sell on Logo Ground. This approach helps me refine ideas that did not quite fit my clients' needs, but I still see potential in them. All it takes is a little effort to turn these ideas into something great. Let me share one of those ideas with you today. Once. I got a request to design a logo for an auto repair shop. The client wanted an abstract logo. And here it is. By the way, if you need a logo or a set of icons, you can totally order them from me. I'm always open to new projects. You'll find the contact form in the description box. While working on this logo, another idea struck me. I decided to combine two concepts, car and range. I also thought that car repair can be pretty complex, and many people don't really understand how it works. So, the logo should be friendly, clear and a bit playful to better visualize what I wanted and to train my eye. I created a mood board based on simple ideas like a cute car and a range. Time to grab my sketchbook and start drawing some rough drafts. I want to bend the silhouette of the range to resemble a car with wheels as its wheels.
I think this idea works and I can continue developing it. When I work in Adobe Illustrator, I always use a modular grid to ensure the logo has consistency and proportion. The base shape for everything, especially the range, is a super ellipse. A shape that's like a mix between a circle and a square. I love using this shape as it gives a modern, rounded and friendly look. As for the main color, I'll use a vibrant gradient feel. For the font of this logo, I decided to pick one from Google Fonts. I need something more naive, maybe even slightly childish, to reflect the friendly and playful concept. Alright, the logo is now complete. I uploaded the final result on Logo Ground for sale. It's a unique logo and only one person can buy it for their brand or business. For a more detailed look at this case, you can check it out on Behance to the link in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Lately, I've been seeing more and more news about artificial intelligence. Some companies are creating and improving this tool, while others waste no time in implementing AI into their products. For some people, AI is something incomprehensible, unnecessary and dangerous. But for others, AI has become an integral part of their lives, improving and simplifying the automation of various processes. 
Recently, I have already created a few logos for AI-related products. One of them is the icon for the desktop application ChatGPT. And another logo I created myself for sale on the LogoGround website. I decided to take it a step further and create a couple more logos for sale on the topic of artificial intelligence. To do this, I combine two simple and understandable associations – the brain and the algorithmic structure of AI. I imagine that AI's processing of queries is a kind of intertwining every answer possibilities. They intertwine and intersect like thin threads. This concept of intertwine lines inspired me to create new logos. It's time to pick up a pencil and make some sketches. First, I want to try making a logo in the shape of a brain consisting of two hemispheres. Inside it, there should be many lines that can intersect each other, forming a pattern. I like this concept. For the other logo, I decided to make a brain in the side view. I think this brain shape resembles a speech bubble. This association fits well for a logo related to AI, as all communication happens through a chatbot. The thin lines should smoothly intertwine with each other, forming the shape of a brain. I am quite satisfied with the result of the sketch. Now I can take a short break and play some PlayStation. It's time to start drawing the logos in Adobe Illustrator. To do this, I will transfer my sketches to the workspace. For more convenient work and proper proportion ratio, I am using a modular grid. When working on the first logo, I need to create maximum smoothness of lines and clear shapes. The image of the two brain hemispheres should be easily recognizable at first glance.
the same applies to the second logo variation. I am striving to accurately position each line. Now I am adding shadows to the lines to give depth and make the logos more interesting and mysterious. I chose a green color as the background. It complements the theme perfectly and is familiar to many, as the ChatGPT logo uses a similar shade the green. I uploaded the final logo designs for sale on the LogoGround website. These are unique logos, and anyone can purchase them for their brand or product, but only once. By the way, if you need a logo or a set of icons, you can order them from me. I am always open to new projects and orders. You'll find the order form link in the description box. You can get a more detailed overview of this case on the Behance. You'll find the link in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon. In today's world, we are surrounded by countless logos that fill our everyday lives. When we wake up and reach for our phones, the first thing we see is a logo. They are everywhere, on product packaging, on the clothes we wear, in the kitchen while preparing breakfast. Basically, everywhere our eyes wander. But logos are more than just pictures or symbols. They can make our lives more interesting and appealing. Throughout the day, we are surrounded by dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of logos, each with its own story, meaning, and purpose. Some logos hold mysteries, others are simple and concise, some are playful, and others are strongly associated with their respective products. Logos are not only visual elements, but also symbols that help us recognize and connect products or services with specific brands. They are key elements of brand or product identification. When we see the logo of a familiar brand, we are associated with quality, reliability and certain values. Many brands strive to create a unique logo that reflects their individuality and recognition. These logos help us make decisions and choices based on familiar and trustworthy brands. I love going for walks, and every time I pay attention to the various logos that surround me. I study their structure, memorize their lines, and look for hidden meanings. Bright colors, unique shapes, and stylish fonts capture my attention and evoke positive emotions. I encounter logos on building facades, billboards, in stores, and on product packaging. They make the environment more vibrant and diverse, adding visual interest to everyday life. While examining logos, I conduct a mental analysis, train my observation skills and play my favorite game, which involves combining different symbols or meanings into a single unique logo. During my walks, I often play this game in my thoughts. This is how I come up with ideas for logos that I later sell on the LogoGround website. 
For example, if you combine a fingerprint and a heart, you can get a logo like this one. And if you merge a heart with dental clinic, you can get a logo like this. Recently, I decided to create a logo for an AI-related application or company. I thought, what if I combine the silhouette of a human head, symbolizing humanity and intelligence, with a fingerprint, which represents not only integrity and security, but also self-identification that developers aim to imbue artificial intelligence with. The fingerprint pattern gives us uniqueness. It makes us distinctive. These are the meanings I wanted to incorporate into the new logo. So I quickly grabbed my sketchbook and started sketching. As I put my thoughts on paper, I realized that the logo had to be placed within a certain shape. I really like the shape of a super ellipse. It's something in between a circle and a square. Once the sketching work was done, it was time to start drawing the logo in Adobe Illustrator. To maintain the shapes and proportions, I usually use a modular grid. It always helps me in creating logos and icons. The lines inside the head not only resemble a fingerprint, but also remind me of the robot head from the movie I Robot. To create the required super ellipse shape, I usually use the Squirkly website. It's a very convenient and useful tool for creating the perfect super ellipse, which can be saved in SVG format. After several hours of meticulous work, I ended up with this logo, which I uploaded for sale on the LogoGround website. It's a unique logo, and anyone can purchase it for their brand or product only once. You can get a more detailed overview of this case on the Behance website to the link in the description box. By the way, if you need a logo or a set of icons, you can order them from me. I'm always open to new projects and others. You'll find the contact form for placing another through the link in the description box. Logos transform our lives, making them better and more interesting. They help us recognize and connect products and services with specific brands add visual interest to our surroundings, 
and contribute to social identification. Thanks to innovation and new technologies, logos have become an integral part of our daily experience. So the next time you see a familiar logo, pay attention to its magical power that makes our lives brighter and more captivating. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Hey, my name is Alex, I am logger and icon maker. Some time ago, I received a request to design logo and icon for the desktop application ChatGPT. The application was being developed for major operating systems like macOS, Windows and Linux, which means the future icon should adapt well to different design guidelines. According to the client's idea, the icon and logo should resemble an old book with a schematic depiction of a robot on it. The book itself should be bound with a green ribbon, which by the way can be changed to red to represent, for example, a test version of the application. Interestingly, this image was created by a neural network. This allowed the client to convey the idea of what they want to see in the final result. After discussing all the details of the project, I started working on it. Before starting a new project, I usually explore other ideas on websites like Behance and Dribble. After that, I conduct research and create a mood board. I add logos, icons, illustrations and other materials that inspire me to create the future logo. It's a quite engaging process and I always spend a significant amount of time on it. This way I train my eye for design. While creating the mood board, I gather various images in my mind that will help me shape the logo in the future. The next step is sketching out the future icon. I create all the sketches based on my imagination, perception and the mood board I prepared earlier. This interaction with images ultimately leads to the final result that aligns with my vision of the future logo. The book symbolized an encyclopedia, a treasure trove of knowledge that holds answers to all questions. and the robot of the cover symbolize the technical aspect of AI. The shape of its head resembles a speech bubble, which refers to communicating with artificial intelligence through a chatbot. In the end, I came up with several versions of the icon. Now I will show them to the client. While the sketches are on review, it's time to take a short break and go for a walk.
After receiving a positive response from the client, I start drawing the icon in Adobe Illustrator, following the Apple guidelines for macOS. When working on the macOS icon, it's essential to consider not only light texture and materials, but also a slight three-dimensional perspective. As if we are looking at the icon slightly from above at a small angle. For the book cover I will use a leather texture to create an aging effect. And for the book spine I will use a fabric texture to emphasize the binding and a more vintage charm. On the book cover I will place a schematic representation of the robot. The final touch is adding the ribbon and shadows. Once the macOS icon is completed, it needs to be simplified and prepared for Windows and then for Linux. All operating systems have their design guidelines for displaying application icons. I believe it's crucial to consider them for the best visual representation and optimal user interaction with the final product. In the Windows Developer section, you can find the necessary design guidelines to adapt the icon. By slightly modifying the shape and simplifying the perception, I create the icon for the ChatGPT application. The same process needs to be done for the icon on the Linux operating system. GNOME is one of the most popular desktop environments for Linux. Following its design guidelines partially, I adapt the icon for the ChatGPT application. As a result, I have three icons. One for macOS, one for Windows and one for Linux. They look great. After some more work, I prepared a set of smaller icons that can be used as a icon on website or for display in the taskbar. I also create a few avatars featuring the robot image. I send this collection of various logo versions, icons and avatars to the client after receiving the final payment for my work. In the end, the client was satisfied with the final result of my work. They loved all versions of the icons. And I hope you enjoyed this video too. Please like and subscribe to the channel. For a more detailed overview of this case, you can visit the Behance website through the link in the description box. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Hey there, welcome back to my channel.